The whole notion of leadership, the practice, is not just about telling story. It's about putting a structure together, forming a team. We working women is a team. Right? It's a team, there's a structure. And you're successful because you have close working relationship with each other. That's when you build power. Who are working, professional women, bringing them together to do what? To uh, achieve the leadership. To achieve leadership, okay. But what measurable goals would it be? Uh, it's, it's it's into the industry where where the, the, where they're barely Asians, and uh, especially the female. So we have two barriers here: woman and Asian. Asian woman. So breaking barriers. So achievable goals would be breaking barriers, being able to achieve power, to be successful, breaking the glass ceiling. Okay, those are some of the goals. Through what? What kind of tactics? By joining together and? Platform. For a platform and? Systems. And? and? Also events. Organizing events, right? Those are tactics. I think it's really important that when you have a project, when you want to accomplish anything, that you set who are you bringing together, what kind of goals do you have, it needs to be measurable. How do you know it's going to be successful? Three years, we want this number of members. And within five years, we want to see 10, 20, 30 successful professional women breaking into whatever. Okay? That's measurable goal. Right? So I think it's important that when you are setting up your, your group, your path, whatever you want to do, that your goal is measurable by time. Okay, other than of course having fun. At the time in 1989, no, I'm sorry, in 1979, uh, Vietnam government, Vietnamese government was kicking a lot of the ethnic Chinese out of Vietnam, and Laos and, and uh, Cambodia, mostly Vietnam. And they got into boats, and of course, Pirates, drowning, raping, uh, all the goods are stolen. People were literally dying in sea. Uh, and I thought it was really important to take some kind of action, to do something, to make sure that the faith that I have are turned into action. Because if I'm just for myself, Really? What am I? Right? So um, I then had a complete change. I was uh, studying fine arts. I was doing well. I had a studio. Uh, graduated from university. I changed my path. I went to uh, a demonstration. I went to a rally. I discovered a power that when people come together, you could in fact say to the government, that we need to bring in more refugees into Canada. Initially, the government didn't want to do that. But after we got together, and there was actually a group of Chinese Canadian in 1979 that came together that did a huge amount of work to pressure the government to open the door. And within one year, we were successful. We were able to have 60,000 Vietnamese refugees, mostly Chinese, to come into Canada. And with 200,000 by the end of the program. And that's when I learned about the power of what a government is supposed to do. This is me many years later in the House of Commons. Uh, I was a member of parliament. I was a city councillor. I became elected in 1985. And that was at that point, because I was involved in the ref uh, refugees movement, that I saw the power. And, and that's when I changed path and became elected. Um, and that's what I was talking about in the House of Commons. Also, this is me with, uh, in the House of Commons with Dr. Joseph Wong. 
because Canada had a very racist policy back in the old days where if you're Chinese, you can't come to Canada between 1947 on, 23 to 47. Only if you're Chinese. Anybody else can come to Canada except Chinese. 19, yeah, 23 to 47. And then earlier, a turn of the century, you can come, but you have to give us two million, well, $500 at the time was about two million. So very racist policy. So that was one of the campaign that I launched where we launched together with the community where the government finally apologized for that racist policy, which is very important. Yeah, very important. It is. So there's three components to good storytelling. It's about yourself. It's about connecting with others, moving others to, into taking action. And the now is that we take action now. And you remember the moral of the story. And there's a value in there. Why is that important? It is important because that sometimes when you try to explain something, it's only the head. When you touch the heart, then the emotions take over, action takes place. So whenever you are speaking or telling a story, it's really important that there are some kind of emotions involved so that if you want people to come out and do something, you have to touch them. If you don't touch them, you can give them the best statistics of why it's important for them to do it, whatever it, whatever it might be. They may not do it because they don't feel touched. Okay? So story touches people's lives. And that's why when action takes place. Why do a story, take, how does it take, uh, move us to action? Uh, it makes us feel the emotions. Okay? It moves us and it comes to the core value of who we are. Okay. My story, the core value is that it's not fair that Chinese have to, uh, have to pay a head tax in order to come to Canada. It's not fair that Canada is such a big country that we do not open the doors to let other people to come in. So there's a sense of emotions that I think it's important that we make sure that people can feel something. So it also a good story can move us from stagnation to motivate us to take action. It can introduce a sense of urgency. It can make us feel angry. It can give us hope rather than being fearful. It could get us to feel that there is solidarity, that we are not alone. So when I saw the picture of people dying at sea, I knew it was urgent. I was angry that why could, why would be young babies and kids and mom, why are they dying? But there is hope if they come to Canada, they are able to, they would be able to, uh, you know, have some hopeful future. And then when I joined a group, then I realized that I'm not alone, that I can make a difference. That is what YCMD stands for. What does it stand for? Yes, you can make a difference. <laughs> That's what story can do, right? So remember, it's the self, it's the us, it's the now. How long ago did you first start rebirthing? Actually, uh, we started last year in May. We started to test it and uh, in November, uh, October. That's official. Why, why did you first get involved? Many, like, you know, at the beginning. The reason we start with working with women is uh, me and Fa, we are in uh, Cuba. Cuba? Okay. Have a vacation. <laughs> there is no internet. Me and her, we lined up on the beach. And we just talking about uh, when we just came to Canada. There is no this kind of platform. There is no any organization. And at that time, even if you don't speak Cantonese, it's so hard to find it. That's right. So I just said, why we don't have a platform so that we can give our experience to the young kids? So they don't need to walk so many ways to get there. So I said, okay. So when we come, we start to. We really started with the blog and then it became a social media platform. 
and now I think they have become a community. And uh, because in the past six months, this has been growing so fast. And I, myself, sometimes I cannot believe, you know, we already surpassed 10,000 subscribers. Uh, fundamentally, from the bottom of my heart, I always believe there is a huge gap in the, uh, in the professional world. Not just necessary for Chinese women, it's for women overall. When you think about in the Bay Street, there's only very few um, women community. Um, there are some very inclusive women community. There's a club here and a club there, which you have to pay for $5,000 to, to join. But where is this kind of group? You know, I always feel lonely about that because I don't know where I'm going to join, where I belong to. So after, you know, intuitively, after many years of trying to find my own, where I'm going to go to, I was thinking, yeah, we're going to set up our own block. <laughs> and then it really instantly it filled the market gap. And that market gap is really informed by all you guys. Because intuitively, we set up this thing, we, we think there will be a market gap there. But the past six months really is you guys helping me to understand there are a market gap, gap, gap in which we all have to fill that gap. This group from day one is never ever about finding a job. It's about growing. It's about, about the next level of leadership. And everything we do is about the next level of leadership. So here we are, and uh, after six months, we have that many members. So our next step is really to think about how we leverage these assets. How we leverage your commitment, dedication, and loyalty, and uh, having a business model.